Hey friends, I'm back with another video. And this one is going to be only about macros. Macros, they make EverQuest better, so much easier sometimes. Instead of hitting four different buttons, you can make a macro and hit one button and it does all those four different actions. And uh, they're very versatile and uh, just great for whether you're just playing in a group or you're two boxing or three boxing, four boxing, whatever your play style is, a, a good, good set of macros can really help out. So one of the things I'm going to do is one of the more confusing and complicated macros I'm going to jump into first. And what is that? Well, that's with AA abilities. So the easiest way to do that, rather than uh, getting on one of my high level characters with macros and stuff I'm gonna do it real simple like and I'm gonna go he over here to the spirit shrouds because this can also help you if you're ever uh, playing a spirit shroud right so we're gonna hail the spirit shroud NPC and because a lot of uh, spells and skills and stuff from spirit shrouds are like AA abilities they're triggered in the same way so you can use this whether you're triggering AA abilities in one of your normal characters or if you're ever doing the Spirit Shroud thing because say you're level 100 and your new fr your friend just joined EverQuest you know and, and they're barely level 20 but you want to team up with them and get XP too or you want to do like old school nostalgic Lost Dungeons of Norath well, you could turn yourself into a level 20 um, monster and group up with your friend. Guide them as you do the mission with them and still get a little bit of XP because you're also level 20. So what are we going to do? Uh, let's do elemental. Elemental, the fighter, earth elemental fighter. That, that might work. Let's say we'll go with our example. We'll go level. Let's actually go a step up. We'll try level 25. Uh, I want to do this for players that are lower level and stuff and uh, just getting started so we're gonna do earth elemental we have abilities here like armor cleave we can make a hot key for that earth bind we can make a hot key for that feral rage I believe that's something you put a hot key for feral roar is that is that one too I think so I don't know what it does some of this stuff I have no idea what it does all right so we got some hot keys and stuff we were talking about doing a macro so say the uh say you're two boxing right and you got a character who's level 60 but you want to have them team up with your level 20 so you get them in a shroud let's that's one of the easiest examples and you want to use an assist key and you're using the level 20 as the main not the one that's shrouded so let's let's start a new clean clean um macro button here and we'll right click and see it's empty it's got nothing there so we're going to type in assist as the command we'll give it a nice color like yellow so it stands out to trigger these uh some of these abilities like armor cleave for example what does it do it exposes a weakness in your opponent's defenses lowering their armor class for a short time so that's great that's something you definitely want to have you know when when you're fighting and and, and doing assist uh, so but how do you activate it well every single uh, AA ability or monster ability if you're in a shroud has an ability activation ID and it's this number right here and you'll see every single one of them has it they have well unless it's just a passive thing then it doesn't have it but any activatable uh, AA ability or monster ability has an ID, a number ID. So we're going to Armor Cleave, and what is the ID? It's 6104. So what do we want to type here? We want to type, and we're going to go on the second line, slash, pause, five. Give it like five seconds. Slash. Alt, activate, 
And this number, 6104. 6104. Okay. Why did I leave this space here? Well, because we want to be able to assist the main, right? So let's say the main in this group is the leader slash assist and we'll type in the name and and that's it and then say we want to activate another ability that's why we have our little pause here because if you have it uh, without any pause sometimes it doesn't trigger the next ability or tries triggering two at the same time and it it screws up so it's always good to have a little pause in between commands so let's try pause five alt activate earthbind earthbind i believe for an earth elemental that's their attack with you <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they root the mob, right? So that's always good to activate too. And that is command 6080. So let's type 6080. There we go. Maybe we'll want to have uh, Feral Rage too. So then Alt Activate. And that's 6086. So there you go. We've just activated four different uh, alternate abilities with one macro. Does it work? Well, heck if I know. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to target this. Come on, you stupid douchebag skeleton. You had to start walking. And then I was going to try to target that one. So here, this rat. This rat's kind of stationary. Hopefully it stays that way. And, and then we're going to pick the character with the assist key and we're going to hit. All right. Did, did I trigger the ability? Oh, look, I got a fire beetle giving me crap, too. I'm, I'm guessing I, I must have done something that was like an AOE because it aggroed that fire beetle. And I wasn't trying to mess with the fire beetle at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this around a little bit slash attack on and I'm just going to change the name to aggro and I want to see if it triggers these abilities. I'm just going to go and run around and, and use this and see what happens. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to not have attack off. I'm just going to do slash do ability one. And let's make do ability. Oh, it's begging. So there we go. So I'm just going to beg from somebody, from one of these monsters, and then see if it's going to activate my, because they're dying too quick because they're like level one. Okay, so see, I did my alternate ability. And I did my, my attacks, my my root attack and my armor cleave. See that? Armor cleave is the defense debuff. So it does work. It does work, guys. Try it once more against this orc here. And there we go. Yeah. I did my earth bind. What about feral rage? What does that do? I don't I don't even know. Feral roar. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot of cool alternate abilities. I'm guessing uh, Rage is probably one thing and Roar is something else. So that is doing AA abilities. Uh, again, it's pretty simple. You do uh, Alt Activate and whatever the code number is. And you could find that by opening up your character, clicking on Alt Advancement and going through the abilities that can be triggered like armor cleave earthbind or like say if you were playing some other class a mage for example where they summon their little swarm of elementals or they summon that little 
dude that just hurls fire. I forget what these things are called, guys. I'm sorry. I'm old. Uh, but you could do that with, you know, just by pressing one macro and, and do all these abilities at once. Uh, you know, maybe you can call it your oh shit macro or something. Because usually when I summon my swarm, it's an oh shit moment. Like if I don't summon this swarm, I'm fighting a rare named and, and I'm going to die if I don't summon it. So of course, yeah, calling it an oh shit macro would probably be very fitting and suitable. So I hope that helps with the macros for alt abilities. Now I want to do some of the more basic uh, macros. Uh, and you could combine them. You can have a macro that does cast spell 1, cast spell 2, and then uh, alt activate 6022 or whatever. So you can have macros that do spells and or uh, regular skills like uh, taunt, kick, you know, this character doesn't get taunt or kick because it's a caster, but you know what I'm saying. And, and how do you know what those options are? Well, for regular abilities, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's supposed to be seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know why they changed it, and this has numbers, because that's not what they should be. Number one, it's not number one. <laughs> That's seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, hey, Daybreak, Dark Paw, whatever the hell you want to be called, fix this shit. Because it's not right and you're just going to confuse people. Okay? Okay. One of my favorite uses of macros, of course, is when I'm playing more than one character. When I'm multi-boxing, playing, playing multiple characters, it makes life so much easier. So I have a main character, which is, is a mage here. And uh, it's I call it the main. It's just the one that is in the lead, in the leadership role, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. And I'll have them maybe pull with uh, Mallow and, and attack. Uh, one thing I usually like to do is go to roles and select that as main assist. And then I try to set the tank as main tank. This ensures that that tank is taunting the enemy properly and they are taking the bulk of the damage instead of the mage pet. So what do I do with my other characters here that are helping? Well, let's go to the second character on the list. What are they? They're an enchanter, all right? And it has just a assist key here. And what does the assist key have? Well, I put pause five. Uh, that just gives like a five second pause from this, the first command to the second command. And what does it say? The command is assist Fezzelmina. Fezzelmina being the main assist. Uh, another command that you can do that does work is you could just put main, assist main. And you'll see here, I'll attack this thing. And assist main will still work. So here's the character I put assist main. And because, yeah, I have Fezzelmina set as main assist, it still assists Fezzelmina. And here, just to double, you know, check, assist main, and it did work. And then I have the third character, which is just another mage for extra DPS uh, to also assist. See, assist Fezzelmina. Which, if I want to, I can also put assist main, and then they'll... This, the, the nice thing about assist main is that it doesn't matter who you're grouped with. As long as the main assist is flagged here as main assist, you know, these 
these this this little symbol of like crossed swords here, uh, then it will work. Now, if no one is set as main assist, it will not work. So you do have to have a main assist uh, flagged in the group, um, and and that way this always works. So you don't have to change it for every new character that you're grouping with. So that's the great thing about that. There is one negative to it. Oh, I'm getting attacked. So let's uh, let's have everybody attack and assist. So what's the negative to it? The negative is uh, that it's not this. This command doesn't work great when you have melee characters. So say it's a group of melees. Like see, you have your main tank is is a paladin. Uh, or, or even like the main assist is a is a puller, like a monk or a rogue or something like that, is is pulling, um, and then the second character that you have, player character might be like a monk, and the third one might be a bard. So they're all melee characters. So the negative to assist main is that for some reason I don't know if it's a bug or a feature. Feel free to let me know in the comments below, but slash assist main never activates auto attack. If you type in assist and the character's name, in this case Vesalmina, auto attack will turn on, will trigger, especially if it's uh, activated. Uh, but assist main never will. So you might need a command that says, you know, the next line might be a command that says attack slash attack on. So it can still work, but you waste a whole line just having to put in attack on because of that issue. And, and it's something that's been bothering me for a while, but every time I bring it up, people don't realize the, the uh, format of assist that I'm talking about. So they're like, well, it works fine for me. That's because they're using slash assist and having the name of the character that they're assisting written out in their macros. If you don't have it written out and you just pipe, type a slash assist main, then yeah, that's what happens. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, activate auto attack. It might not be a big deal. If you don't have that many commands to activate, then it doesn't really matter, right? It's it's fine. But to me, it, it kind of bugs me because it's it's been forever. It's been like that. Uh, I haven't really uh, checked lately. So so let's let's actually check it now. So here, uh, the last character, Fezzel Willa. Uh, has assist main right so I'm gonna put slash assist on okay auto attack on assist is now on right so when I use assist next then their name should be flashing like auto attack is on right right so let's try it out and see what happens so here's another guy to attack I'll send in my pet. I'll hit Mallow. I'll assist with this one. And then here's the one where auto attack should kick on. It doesn't kick on. Auto attack does not kick on. Just to prove my point that this is really a thing, I'm going to type out the actual name, Fezzel Mina. So here, the assist Fezzelmina instead of assist main. Right? Right. So now we'll pull, and then we'll examine the key. Whoa, what the hell is going on? All right. Attack, assist, assist. Here we go. I am correct. Auto attack has activated because I have 
assist and the name written out. Makes a huge difference. A huge difference. So again, just to just to confirm, just to show you guys one more time. I'm gonna type in slash assist main for the next one, and you'll see the auto attack will not come on. And this is fine for casters, you know, because they don't really need the auto attack. They don't really need to swing their weapon and miss 50 times. And see it didn't auto attack did not come on. So the convenience of assist main is that no matter who you group with that assist key works as long as they have the flag for main assist for the puller. And it just works. The only thing that it doesn't do is uh, it doesn't uh, auto attack. So again, for casters, it doesn't really matter because the casters usually standing a distance away from the fighting and not auto attacking anyway. So that's fine. Uh, it's just something that I thought I would note. So we go pull in another one and hitting my assist keys and you know, it works great because what's happening on this one, for example, uh, it's sending in the pet slash pet kill or you can also use slash pet attack. There's also another command that you can do is this is more for higher levels, right? But I thought I would mention it. You could put slash uh, pet Q attack. And there is also slash pet Q swarm. And these are two very different commands. Uh, and I believe that mages can do it way earlier than anybody else. I don't even know if you need an AA ability for it to work or not. Uh, or if it just works right off the bat. I, I'm really, really unsure. Uh, so please feel free to, to tell me or correct me uh, if I'm wrong about anything. I'm more than happy to listen to feedback, to listen to criticism. If you have macros you'd like to see me do a video on or different commands that I might miss, again, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but let's say you're playing a melee character. Let's cover a few commands you could do with a melee character. So I'm going to make a macro over here. Slash. Um, I'm just going to call this slash aggro. Because say, you know, you're playing one character uh, alone. Okay, say you're playing a character alone. and you But you want to make uh, your experience just more convenient for yourself, right? Pushing less buttons. Uh, so I'm going to highlight that in yellow. I'm also going to loot my, my crap because I hate when I have... I already have so many chat windows open. I hate when I have too much other stuff open, too. So I'm going to stand here in a corner. Because, you know, nobody puts Fezzelmina in the corner. But anyway. Uh, so let's say we're over here under combat. And let's say uh, number one here, which is actually number seven, is you have kick. And then you have taunt. And then you have bash. So that's three commands here that you could do. Uh, so let's say you want one, one command that's just attack on. Okay? You just want to have auto attack on. And that's all it is. It's the same as pressing melee attack. Okay? Is, is slash auto attack on. If you don't believe me here, say auto attack comes on. I did that thing that I do where I put the slash up in the, the button name. Uh, so let's say you want to activate a kick or taunt slash do ability 
7. 7 would be this one, and this would be 8, that would be 9, that would be 10. Again, I don't know why they put this shit here with these numbers, uh, because that's not what they do. And, and just to test it, the one ability that I have is bind wounds. So I'll target myself, I'll hit accept, and if it activates bind wounds, then I'm right. I can't use that ability while I'm on a mount. So let's get rid of the mount. Let's try it again. Uh, and it works. You begin to bandage yourself. I mean, I'm full hit points, so it's not going to do anything. But again, uh, what did I have? I didn't have one. I had do ability seven. So that is key number seven. And that's eight, and that's nine, that's ten. So please remember that. Again, I don't know why... They screwed with these buttons. It used to say 7, 8, 9, 10, but they screwed it up uh, in, in some recent patch or something like that. So let's say you activate kick, uh, and you might want to pause in between the different commands. You can hit slash, pause, 5. Then this is important. For your pause command, you always need to have a comma before your doability command. And that's with anything. That's with um, your your casting command, and and you can you can only link commands on a single line when one of them is pause or timer. All right. You can't have uh, doability seven, comma slash doability eight, comma slash doability nine. It doesn't work that way. It won't let you do it. All right. Uh, so say you do do ability 7 and then say you do slash pause 5 comma slash do ability 8 and say you want to also activate some kind of uh, AA ability you know uh, you're, you're a ranger and or a monk or something and there's some kind of uh, I don't know much about the AA abilities of rangers or monks, but let's say you have some kind of a cool AA ability that you can use during an attack, right? That's where you would add alt activate. So slash alt activate, and then you would need the number. So let's say the number is uh, 2033, for example. And, you know, you do that and alt-activate. Um, and, then, and then that would happen. So you would do, like, say if you had kick and then taunt or kick and disarm, something like that. And then it would have, like, alt-activate, which would activate an alternate ability, uh, an AA ability, if you will. Uh, and then you can have even another slash alt-activate or something like that. So so that's that. Now say uh, you're in a group. Say, say you're doing something that I don't normally do. And you're actually in a group. So let's say I'm going to make a button called pull, right? What happened? Where's my mount? Oh, that's right. I got off the mount to do that test with the button. So I'm going to call this button pull. And because, uh, you know, when you're running around, say you're 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 the group puller uh, and you want to tell the group something quickly. We used to have these keys. I don't know if people pull anymore. Right. But say you're in a group and they expect you to run around, find monsters and pull it back to where the group is hanging out uh, to kill. Right. So this was something we would do all the time. Slash G which means uh, to talk in group. All right, something very simple. And it just says slash G, I'm bringing a percent T to kill. Hit accept, all right? What does that mean? What is percent T, right? So if I target something like 
that uh, raw tuck, a raw tuck scream bringer, and I press this key. Oh, Got to open where it says uh, group chat. Okay, oh, here it is, my group chat. And it says, you tell your party I'm bringing a raw tuck screaming bringer to kill. So percent T is sort of a placeholder or a code uh, for whatever you are targeting. So see, I'm targeting a screen bringer. So if you're in a group, you want to make a silly macro that says, I'm bringing so-and-so for everybody to kill or for the bash or for whatever. Uh, this was a popular key that we would use as a puller. Uh, I even used it as a mage sometimes because I was pulling for a group because luckily there was a, a shaman and shaman's mana was always pretty low. So we said, no, you sit in mez because you're keeping us alive. I'll go pull for a little while because maybe the others also had mana issues or whatever. And I was like, sure, I'll live dangerously. <laughs> I will pull because I had every faith in my pet that my pet would at the very least taunt the thing off of me which usually worked okay, especially if it was an earth pet. It would just do its wavy hands, root dance, and root the mob so I wouldn't die. Um, so that was another another popular thing. Uh, and uh, so, so yeah, slash G just means to talk in group. I'm trying to think of other, other cool commands that could be done. Um, I've done macros where uh, hide corpse so if the walk into a zone and it's laggy because it's full of corpses I would just do a hide corpse button right and it's just slash hide corpse all that's what I would do most of the time I know there are different ones but hide corpse usually works, and there it says hiding all existing corpses but yours. Uh, you, you know, there's hide corpse group or hide hide corpse um, looted, which means it'll hide any corpse that had already been looted. Uh, not all of those worked well for me, so I usually don't I don't usually don't mess with them too much. So let's let's go pull something else here. Let's mess with this dark knock lurch here and his faithful mutt. Wow, my pet's taking some damage there. There we go. Oh. We've got uh, their pet over there is being a bit of a douche and attacking one of my guys. So you see, especially when you're playing more than one character, macros really do help because I can quickly switch between windows and choose different characters and they could do a multiple different things, actions with just a stroke of one key. So you don't really need to get any kind of third party software uh, to you know, play multiple guys because, you know, just as, as a recap, we got the Enchanter. They do Assist Main, and then they do uh, Pet Attack. See, that's a useless command at the moment. I just always add it because I know that they'll get control of their pet eventually. Or if they charm, you know. And then uh, Pet, or, or then it's uh, Cast 5 which is their Tashani, which is a magic debuff. And then cast four, which is Shiftless Deeds, which is a slow spell. And then uh, Gasping Embrace, which is their dot. And similar commands with the mage, where they send a pet in to attack. Uh, oh, and we were talking about Q attack, and what does it do? Well, let's say you've pulled uh, two or three guys at a time and you want to make sure your pet will attack 
uh, the next one as soon as the first one dies. Well, that's where pet Q attack comes in. So if I get, say, three different things, I could target the one and, and hit uh, pet Q attack. Then I target the second one, hit pet Q attack, target the third one, hit pet Q attack. What this does is instead of just hitting pet attack, because if you just hit pet attack, it will attack the one. Then as soon as you command it to attack the second one, it'll attack the second one, and then it'll attack the third one without finishing off the first one, right? Well, Q attack, it, it's basically lining up a list for your pet. It's like pet, attack one until it's dead. Then Q attack the second one and then until it's dead and then Q attack the third one until it's dead and so on. I don't know how long the list gets. So if you know, please feel free to uh, tell me in the comment below. That would be awesome. But I do know it can get pretty long because I've, I've tried it out a little bit. Uh, but I, I didn't really count it and, and, and do it over and over again to make sure it was right. I didn't have a control group. Nothing was like empirical. And I can't say factually that it's, oh, it's 10 or it's 20 or it's infinite. I can't say that with certainty, so I won't say it at all because I, again, I do not know. And I don't like to say things that I don't know for sure. Uh, if I do, I usually say, this is my opinion. This is my thoughts on the matter. I never try to say, this is, as a matter of fact, especially if I don't know for sure. There are a few other macros that I think are very helpful as well. There's a macro that I created. It's sort of a macro chain, <laughs> one might call it, to practice a certain skill. Uh, one of those skills that we don't use very often is uh, divination. And divination is used for uh, any kind of vision spells usually and uh, invisibility spells. Which I guess in a sort of point, it's, it's, it's vision related, right? Uh, so it's one of those skills that often gets neglected where your skill is really low. So here I got invisibility as spell number nine. Uh, I'm actually going to change that to make it spell number eight. So I made it spell number eight here because... I already have a macro with it. And what is the macro? I called it practice, right? So the, the button's called practice. I have pause 42 between each casting and cast eight. Let's just make sure that 42 seconds is enough. Cast time, uh, 2.5 seconds. So it should be enough. So let's hit accept, target ourselves and hit the practice key. What does it do? I cast invisibility on myself, then I cast it again, and then I cast it again. As you see here, my divinity skill, I was a lion. This is a, a relatively new character, but they're already in their 50s, 55, and the divin divination skill is only at 30 now, and that's after casting it a few times and getting a few skill ups. So if I wanted to cast a higher level uh, invisibility spell, I might have trouble. I might fizzle a bunch. So this cast chain lets you cast the same spell over and over again um, a bunch of times where you can skill up quickly. As you see, I got four or five skill ups in a matter of a few seconds. And let's say you have two or three different characters on your computer uh, and they all leveled up very quickly and didn't uh, skill up in certain things. I've done that before. I've had like a group like I have now and maybe all three of them have really bad divination or bad abjuration where their hit point buffs keep uh, fizzling. Well, I'll set up a macro. 
I usually do spell slot eight of whatever it is they need to brush up on. And I just sit there for 20 minutes, uh, sometimes longer, until they have skilled up uh, to at least a skill level of 100, 150, or whatever uh, about the average should be for that skill and, and for that specific level. And uh, it does, it does help and it does save some time. Usually you don't want to do this in a zone where you're fighting. It's usually better to do it while you're up at POK or something. It's also best to do it while you're sitting on a on a mount or a horse of some kind because then you're continuously meditating and it's very difficult to run out of mana. Sometimes you may need to play with the timers because if the timers are too close together you might not get all five castings off but it looks like I have this timer pretty much dead on because as you see it triggered all five times one right after the other and uh, it, it may take a little practice so if you set up a key like this and it only casts two or three times well your timer is too short so instead of 42 seconds you know try 52 seconds and then if it seems too long you could cut it down to like 45 46 seconds until it seems about right where it seems to be rapid firing like as soon as your spell bar becomes clear again where where you can recast uh, it, it should it should recast because you see it goes dark while it's casting and as soon as it's able to cast again boom and it's casting again that's a perfect timer right there man and there's uh, certain spells that you know have longer cast times than others so you have to change your timer uh, and that's, that's, you know, uh, I think on one of my tips videos, uh, possibly, uh, it's, it's, uh, it was one of my most popular videos. I actually made one about, uh, about this. And, uh, I think that's about it uh, for macros. Like I said, you could use it for combat. You could use it for AA abilities, uh, even if it melee class, uh, for, for just do abilities like combat abilities or for like begging or let's say you're a rogue let's say you're a rogue and you want to pick pockets while you're fighting uh, so let, let's let's do one for that say say you're a rogue you want to do pick pockets while you're fighting and you also uh, because you're a rogue this can also be helpful for a monk let's say you want also uh, hide during combat so you reduce aggro um, because as a rogue gets a little higher level, when they hide mid-combat, like they stop attacking for a second, hide, and then start attacking, uh, it's like they're ducking out of combat and lose some aggro. So it's, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, so let's just call it PP because rogues have pickpocket, right? So we're going to try to do one like say if they were pickpocketing and hiding at the same time. So what do we want to do? We want to do uh, slash attack off because we're going to say let's say they're already attacking the thing and we want to do this mid fight. Well first you're going to have to turn off auto attack so that's why we would have oops I had two ways there slash attack off then we would have slash do ability uh, one because you know pickpockets it's going to be one of these here and then it's a uh, slash do ability two so let's say pickpockets was here and then hide was here right and then you do slash did it again. I wrote attack with two A's for some reason. What the hell is wrong with me today? So there you go. I did attack off, uh, do ability one, do ability two, and attack on. Right? And so there we go. That could be my pickpocket button. 
say I was attacking that guy. Uh, this is not a valid command. Wow, I misspelled attack. I put two A's instead of... I think it's been a long day, guys. Okay, now it works, right? Um, it turns off attack, as you see. See attack gets turned off. It tries to trigger the two abilities, which I don't have. And then it turns attack back on. So, and then if you wanted to, you can even have, like, uh, put backstab here, like slash uh, do ability 7. So, like, let's say 7 here was backstab. So there, you're practicing your hide skill, you're practicing your pickpocketing skill, and you are uh, practicing your backstab, all with one simple button. Um, here's something you might want to remember. If you are in a group with other players, it might be considered inconsiderate to pickpocket the monster uh, that you're fighting and and later on uh, everybody's gonna be like wow these hill giants weren't dropping any platinum today for example if you're fighting hill giants you know uh, which usually their main loot is dropping larger loads of platinum this is you know if you're level 30 ish or something uh, or just anything else. I mean, because pickpocketing, you, you get just about everything that's on them. You might even start pickpocketing magic items. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I've ever actually uh, pickpocketed a magic item, but I have pickpocketed uh, high-quality bear pelts off bears before, which is kind of funny. It's like, oh, oh my God, I'm naked. You know, just imagine the bear. Uh, so that so that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing is if you're playing a monk, you could do something similar with this with uh, feign death. So you're you're, uh, but with feign death it would be a little different. So let's uh, let's call this button FD. So say it's a monk, and you're gonna plan on doing feign death in the middle of combat because you keep pulling aggro off the main tank, right? So slash attack off so you want to uh, attack off right and and here's this one's important slash pause five this one needs a pause the other one for the rogue did not but this one will slash I think feign death would be under the Seven, eight, nine, ten, but I'm not sure. It might be under the one, two, three, four, five, six, or the one through six, which is what a normal human would have said instead of naming off each number. Um, so why do you want to pause? Well, if you're going to feign death, you might need to be feign death for a couple seconds for it to actually do anything. And then what you would need is slash stand. Uh, because when you're feigned death, it's like you're sitting, laying down, something. So you need to stand up again. So you want to slash stand. And then attack on. So there you go. You would have a button that would let you, if you're a monk, do feign death. And then stand up, because you're laying on the ground, feigning death. And then turning attack on and it would only be like a 0.5 second delay and uh, you'd be right back in the main combat. Uh, now if you're a monk and you're actually unfortunately stuck with the job of being the main tank, you may not want to do feign death because if you lose aggro and you're just grouped with a bunch of finger wiggling casters, they're going to be pissed because they're probably all going to die because you just lost aggro. So 
And that's it, I think, for uh, hot buttons. I hope all of these have helped. Whoa! We, 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 speaking of aggro, we just got some. Something spawned right here on top of us. I, I know I'm forgetting something, probably forgetting something important, but I can't think of it right now. So there could always be a volume two or a part two of this for more advanced uh, things. But I do think I covered things pretty good. Uh, like I said, you could do AA abilities with, uh, with the commands and you can do regular abilities. You could cast spells. Oh, there's another one. Uh, so macros can be super helpful, even when it just comes to things like practicing spells. There is one more. There is one more that's uh, really, really helpful. You're a ranger. Let's say you're a ranger or a druid, and you like trying to forage every chance you get. So we're gonna we're gonna do one where we're foraging. Say. So let's say you have Forage, it's like uh, Doability 3, this one doesn't need the pause. So let's say you want to Forage in the middle of fighting, because <laughs> you're that kind of guy, you know, you fight a lot, you're a ranger. Um, so you, uh, slash attack off, slash Doability 3, let's, so let's say that's the Forage. Oh, actually this one will need a small pause. Pause. Four. Four should be enough, hopefully. Uh, if not, you could try five. And then what do we want? We want slash auto inventory. This can also be used for pickpockets. Because a lot of time when you're pickpocketing, you might end up with the item on your cursor. So this can also be helpful for pickpocketing. And then slash attack on. Some people even have like slash auto inventory twice just in case, like especially with forage. Some later on you get double forage. So that would auto inventory if you get two items foraged at the same time. So let's hit accept. So it's working where auto attack comes back on. But to test it, Let's have, like, say I just foraged a mug of beer. And we're going to hit this auto inventory. And if I foraged, and this would go in my auto inventory. And it's not. It's not. So I screwed it up. Slash auto So let's try it one more time. There we go, it worked. So that's what would happen. So like if you're in the middle of a of a battle and but you're really wanting to practice foraging, you, no one's going to notice that you stopped attacking for 0.4 seconds, you know, and it's not going to matter. And that way you can be foraging. And uh this works, this can also be good for, for pickpocketing too, where you do auto inventory. And, you know, slash do ability again, three, that's if your uh, foraging is skill three. It would be skill one through six, right? So that's it. I think we have covered enough uh, different abilities and uh, macro configurations. I really hope this video helps you and that you've enjoyed it. Uh, I, sorry I didn't think of anything funny to say or do during this video, but it's pretty much just a huge information dump. <laughs> I said dump. And uh, sometimes you know, there's nothing really funny about just sharing large amounts of information. It's just a critical thing, right? So again, I hope this helps you. Do remember I have a Patreon and I'd love for more patrons to join. You would be helping me, helping the channel 
supporting me and the channel and everything I do. And, and you'll have my eternal gratitude. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to keep, uh, keep, keep me doing videos and, and out of, off, off the streets. Because, you know, if I'm on the streets, I might be out there slinging, uh, slinging smack to Nazi nuns on street corners or something I you know keep me out of your school districts guys you know just <laughs> sorry it's probably not funny but it's kind of funny um, but yeah uh, and please remember to also uh, if you can't afford a patreon a like and a subscription on YouTube is absolutely free and that helps me out too, and I appreciate everybody who who does that also. And there's also a Twitter and a Discord. Everything is linked in the description down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow.